Welcome to the American Revolution uh, unit. This is unit three, and we're going to start section number one, which is the road to revolution. We're going to look at all the events that led the English colonies to declare independence from Great Britain. So here is a very good visual idea of what we're going to go through. And I want you to think about all of these events as stairs. They start, these stairs start at the bottom level with the French and Indian War, and they go up and up and up and up until the colonists declare revolution, they declare war, and they fight the revolution, and it ends with us, uh, the United States rather, being formed and being its own nation. So all of these different events and ideas are going to be covered through this lecture and through this series of lectures. So play, pay attention, get your packet out, and be ready to take some notes. Now, in uh, 1754, there was a war that began here in the colonies, and it's called the French and Indian War here in the United States. But over in England and in Europe, it's called the Seven Years' War. Now, French and Indian, you might think, well, the French fought the Indians, but that's not true. The war was actually fought between the English and the French over control of the land in North America. Now remember, the colonies and the colonists still thought of themselves as English. They were English citizens. They, were, they relied on England for their rights and liberties. And so the uh, colonies fought with the English regulars and they fought against the French, and both sides used Indians. So from the perspective of an English citizen here in the colonies, this was the French and Indian War. That's who they fought against. Now the English wanted to go west, but the French in their colonies blocked them. And so the war started over land disputes between the two nations. And if you're um, interested in watching a really good documentary about this, there are there's a four-part series that I've put links to on the Moodle site that talk all about in extremely deep, deep terms um, about the French and Indian War. And George Washington unwittingly started the war. And you'll get the whole story about that in those videos. Now each side used Native Americans to help fight the war. And it was a it was a bloody, bloody war and extremely expensive and in life and treasure. Now, in 1754, the Albany Congress was called, and we'll talk about that in a moment here. Um, but the problem that the colonies ran into was that they were basically acting as separate entities. So New York did its own thing. Pennsylvania did its own thing. Massachusetts, its own thing. And they would have to figure, they had to figure out a way to protect themselves. And each colony individual individually was unable to protect itself. Um, but Ben Franklin, he had a proposition. He proposed this plan to unify the English colonies or bring them together so that they worked together to protect each other. Here are some images of the uh, from the French and Indian War. This is from the movie, um, the one with Hawkeye, Last of the Mohegans some French soldiers, some English soldiers. Basically, the, uh, the war was fought on the frontier, um, which means out on the edge of civilization, in the woods, on the lakes. And a lot of battles happened right here in this area. A lot of people, names that you know, are from this area, like Sir William Johnson. So in 1754, Ben Franklin proposed the Albany Plan of Union. Under this plan, each colonial legislature, and that's the people that make the laws in the colony, they would elect delegates to an American Continental Assembly presided over by a royal governor. The plan was not approved by the English Parliament, though. They said, whoa, 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 we're not going to let our colonies join together and work together because that's going to make them too powerful, and we're not going to give them the right to make laws or to you know, send troops here and there from New York to Virginia or vice versa. And so from the English side, there was too much of a threat to let the colonies join together. And instead, the English decided to send their own troops over to America or to the colonies to fight the French. 
And as they did that, as the uh, the British troops came over, the um, the col- colonists fought with the English troops, and so there was this growing sense that these colonies, even though they were individual, they start they really felt like they were English. They fought with the greatest army in the world, and they fought side by side. And um, so you see that picture there, the join or die picture. Yeah, they are separated. They are they're the snake cut into pieces, but they're British. And the king loved his colonists. That's how they felt. The colonists felt that they were supported by the king, that they were true Englishmen, even though they were 3,000 miles away from their homeland. So this join or die picture... Um, the colonists, many colonists were afraid that individually, if they were into pieces, separate, they would be swallowed up by the French, they'd be beaten, and the Indians as well. But uh, together, they would be very strong like a snake. And that symbol comes up again and again in American history. We're going to see that um, in the next couple slides. So in the end, England wins the war. They beat the French, and the French lost their colonies in North America. Um, but the major result that you need to understand is that the war was extremely expensive for the English. They were millions of dollars in debt after fighting this war because they had to fight it 3,000 miles away from their homeland. And because the British were protecting their colonies, the, Brit- the king believed that it was the American colonists that should help pay for the war for a variety of reasons, other than just they were protected, but um, the king saw that his his uh, subjects back in England, they were already overtaxed. They couldn't, he couldn't get any more money out of them, and the colonies were ripe for the picking. And that's the whole point of having colonies in the first place. It's the system of mercantilism, where the colony's only reason to be is to make money for the homeland. So a British Parliament wanted American colonists to help pay for the cost of the war. Now, as the, on the colonist side, they, they, this is the start of problems, big, serious problems, where they said, no way, we're not the ones that should be paying for this. So, British, the British Parliament, after the French and Indian War, passed a couple of different laws that caused the rumblings with the colonists, rumblings against England. Uh, So Parliament wanted Americans to help pay for the French and Indian War, and they passed these laws, they passed some laws to control the colonists and create taxes on the colonies so that they could raise money to pay for the war. The first big uh, law that was passed was the Proclamation Act of 1763, and it had a couple of things, parts to it. Number one, it forbade settlers from moving west across the Appalachian Mountains and into Indian Territory. So it said, colonists, you cannot go west. You have to stay here where our colonies are settled. And But out west is more land, so the colonists were angry that they couldn't go there, that they couldn't go across the proclamation line. And secondly, the king sent 10,000 soldiers to make sure the colonists didn't go west. And that's going to be one of the complaints found in the Declaration, that there was a standing army sitting in the colonies. And it made many of the colonists extremely nervous and angry. They didn't want an army telling them what to do when they already have a government that's telling them what to do. And also the king and parliament passed the Sugar Act of 1764. It placed a tax on sugar, coffee, indigo, and molasses. And these are items that in the colonies were very, uh, were very desired. People wanted them, and the tax was not that big. It started out at a penny, I believe, per whatever their unit of measurement was, but it was not very big. Uh, inexpensive, but these are items that were used every day and quite heavily every day. So the tax was seen as unfair, uh, just for the money for for the money aspect. They didn't want to pay more, 